Well, hey guys, welcome back. My name is Jessica and this is the Pet Parenting Reset. If you're new here, we talk about all things dog training, dog behavior, cat behavior, dog and cat nutrition and enrichment, all the things to make sure your pet is the happiest, healthiest version of themselves that they could possibly be with your help, of course. And today's video, we're talking about constipation in cats. So I'm going to start out with a little story decided to switch things up a little bit and do this video in my car. Um, I've just been doing all my videos in my office and it's gotten a little boring. So um, I'm going to start out by giving you a little story that happened this year with me and one of my cats. And then I'm going to give you a little bit more information about constipation um, that I read up on from Dr. Judy Morgan in preparation for this video. So um, if you're new here, please make sure to check out the channel, subscribe if you like it, and let's get into the video. Okay, so this story, it was the middle of winter. It was like February-ish, I think, and I'm in Central Texas, and I have a designated cat room for my cats because my husband is allergic, and it's a big, beautiful room that's all decked out. They've got all they could want, <laughs> um, lots of vertical space, all lots of climbing, there's a lot going on. Uh, but I do have a separate heat and air conditioning unit for that room because of the allergy issue. And while it's an incredible unit, I bought a um, unit that was rated much larger than the room that it's for, just to make sure <laughs> we had everything perfect. It does incredible in the summer. It didn't do, it did well in the winter, but during the, we had some freezing temperatures and when it was below freezing, it just, the heater part could not keep up. So I had to relocate my cats into another part of the house um, just for a few days because I, I wanted to make sure that they had heat, <laughs> of course. and. When I did that, one of my cats, Riley, who I absolutely, he's, he's one of my heart animals. We've been through a lot together. He um, was a little bit more anxious about the new location, the move than my other cats, I think because he is visually impaired. Um, and of course I do everything I can to try to keep things in the same places for him. And he does wonderfully, uh, in new environments. He's really good at figuring out where things are and where he can and can't go. And it, it, it anyway, um, that's kind of like the background of the story, but his anxiety with that transition, um, he got a little constipated. And so my first thought was, okay. Let me one, make sure this is, because what I, what, how I noticed it was that he would be getting in the litter box and nothing would happen and he would get out. Now, my first thought is, okay, I need to make sure this isn't an emergency. And by an emergency, I mean that he is able to urinate because I've been through this before where a cat is unable to urinate or is having trouble urinating or maybe only a little bit is coming out. That is actually a life threatening emergency. You need to get to the vet or an emergency vet clinic immediately. So I made sure I was like a hawk on him and I was watching him, no breaks, making sure that when he got in the litter box, he did urinate. Once I figured that part out that he was able to urinate, I could relax a little bit because there's still, if it is, um, a fecal issue and not a urine issue, then there's still a possibility of obstruction that you really want to make sure that, that that's not what's going on, right? So I still paid attention to him, but I wasn't quite as worried because I knew that he was able to urinate. So what I did was initially gave him a little bit of plain pureed pumpkin. Now this is not the kind of pumpkin that you buy for like pumpkin pie filling. It's 100% pumpkin. And I actually have the little pouches from uh, Wee Ruva. And so I mixed a little bit of that into his regular food. Well, he didn't like that too much. He didn't care for the smell 
probably the smell. I don't even know that he tasted it. Um, so I had to resort to something. I was like, okay, I had to think about what else I had on hand that I could give him being coconut oil. So I gave him some coconut oil and overnight he was able to have a good poop again. Now it could have been that he did end up eating a little bit of the pumpkin and, and then maybe the pumpkin mixed with the coconut oil. These two are going to be really, really great to always have on hand. They are shelf stable. And depending on your cat, one, you know, you may have multiple cats and you'll find that one cat likes one and one cat likes another and that's okay. Um, these are some really great staple items to keep on hand if your cat truly is a little bit constipated. Now, that's my story. Everything worked out fine, of course, but I wanted to go into a little bit more detail uh, um, from what I read, and actually I have my notes here from Dr. Judy Morgan, because Dr. Judy Morgan is a holistic veterinarian. She no longer, um, I believe, she no longer practices, um, like she doesn't take on patients any longer, but she is an incredible educator. She has a huge online community and she also has a store online. Um, she's a speaker. She does a lot of appearances on different shows, different podcasts, different, um, you know, Facebook, YouTube, all the, all the things. So I've got my notes here from Dr. Judy Morgan talking about cats with constipation. Now, again, she goes into the, is it urine? or is it feces? What are we talking about? And of course, if your cat is unable to urinate, that is life-threatening emergency right now. If there is a, a potential obstruction with, the, with your cat being able to defecate, being able to actually poop, that is also an emergency. So if you, you, know, you wanna be on top of this and you wanna know what's going on with your cat in the litter box. So here is what Dr. Judy Morgan is saying. Um, the main issue she sees with cats is improper nutrition. And that is what is causing a lot of both the urinary, but also um, fecal issues, constipation. Cats are not designed to eat dry foods. They're not designed to eat all these starches and carbohydrates and sugars that are in what we call kibble products, which are the hard um, little pieces of food that you buy in a bag. And I feel like most people know what kibble is, but some people don't. So I, I feel like I have to kind of explain that. Cats are not designed to eat that. They are obligate carnivores. And as obligate carnivores, they are their body is built to eat and utilize nutrients from prey animals, from meat, uh, meat, bone, organ meat, uh, hair and fur, feathers, all the things. In the, the notes that I have from Dr. Judy Morgan, it says in, the only thing bolded on this page is dry food is the worst diet you can feed your cat. I could not agree more. Um, I, I actually was just watching a reel that Jackson Galaxy put up this morning saying the exact same thing. Dry food is the absolute worst thing we can feed our dogs. He was actually replying to a comment about can I, how do I feed my cat a vegan diet? And he says, absolutely not. We, you know, cannot feed cats a vegan diet. They are obligate carnivores. But anyway, dry food is the absolute worst thing we can be feeding our cats. And this actually causes most, if not all, <laughs> um, urinary issues and um, GI issues with, you know, being able to absorb nutrients, being able to pass stools. Uh, so all of these issues are very, very heavily diet related. Um, one way that you as a pet parent will easily be able to identify a blockage is if your cat is unable to pass stool, but throws up because your cat's body is saying, I've got to get this stuff out of my body. If it's not going to be able to go that way, then I'm going to make it go this way. Um, and those are the two areas, the two ways that a body, your cat, your cat can evacuate whatever is in the body. So um, that is a key indication for you. But if it gets that far, you definitely need to be at the veterinarian's office because blockages, uh, whether fecal or urinary, again, are life threatening. And I don't mean for this video to be like, oh, fear, 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 like, no. Well, that's why at the beginning I told you what I did for my cat with the um, pureed pumpkin and the coconut oil. And for him, it worked like a charm overnight. So uh, I'm just providing you with as much information as I can to make sure you're 
understanding this whole concept of, okay, I think my cat's constipated. Where should my mind be going now? So this next part I'm going to read from Dr. Judy Morgan. It says, from a traditional Chinese veterinary medicine perspective, she is an incredible resource for TCVM, which is traditional Chinese veterinary medicine. Um, this, talking about uh, constipated cats, this is a blood and yin, Y-I-N, deficiency. Basically, you have a very dry, large intestine. If you're feeding a cat kibble, they're essentially in a constant state of dehydration. If you've been following me for any period of time, this is not something you you haven't heard before. You have definitely heard me say this about being dehydrated when feeding kibble, even if they're drinking water. This is why a species appropriate diet is so crucial. Often these cats will also have dry, flaky skin. There is an herb called Deng Guai Kong Rong. I hope I said that right. <laughs> that is very effective. It nourishes and moves the blood, moistens and purges the large intestines, promotes appetite, resolves food stasis, moves qi, QI, relieves pain, and drains heat, which is a great combination for these cats. If your cat is still suffering from constipation after switching to a high moisture, species appropriate diet, this herb and acupuncture are worth a try and produce great results in her practice. Again, this is Dr. Judy Morgan. So I wanted to, again, provide you my perspective and as a pet parent, as a cat mom, where my mind initially goes, what I do for my cats, if that had not worked for Riley, if overnight he was not able to um, pass feces, if he was not able to uh, eliminate whatever he needed to eliminate with me giving him pumpkin and coconut oil, um, or coconut oil, I don't think he ate the pumpkin, I think it was the coconut oil, um, then I would have contacted my veterinarian because something else may have been going on, especially if he had thrown up. If he had thrown up, I would have been on the phone to my veterinarian immediately. So to kind of recap what Dr. Judy Morgan was saying, most of this is diet related. We need to be feeding our cats a high moisture, species appropriate, meat-based diet, and that alone can help resolve a lot of these issues for your cat. But if not, there are still some other things we can add in. So. I hope this video was helpful. Please leave a comment down below and let me know. Also, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with any friends or family that you think um, could use this information, especially people who have cats. If you're not already subscribed, please make sure to check that subscribe button. I don't, is it on this? I don't know what side it's on. I'm in my car, so I'm all discombobulated. But anyway, um, also please check out the podcast same name, The Pet Parenting Reset, wherever you get your podcast, Spotify, Google, Apple uh, Store, all, all of the places you can find The Pet Parenting Reset. You can also go to thepetparentingreset.com and you can listen there if you prefer to just listen on your web browser. With that, um, oh, Patreon, guys. I do hope you join the Patreon family. It's the first link in the description. You can also get this and all of my other links um, in my link tree, which is the second link in my description. Um, I really hope to see you over on Patreon. You can join for as little as a dollar a month. It's a really great community over there. Lots of new, extra bonus, all the things, content. Uh, yeah, so with that, I hope you and your cat are, and your, all of your pets are doing wonderful. Give them some extra love from me. Until next time, bye guys.